All right, good day everybody. Welcome back to my channel. So, as some of you may know, um, for a while now, because I've got a couple of big scopes, I've got my Celestron C925 um, and I've got my Esprit 120, um, and both of them fully loaded up. They're kind of weighing about somewhere between 13 and 14 kilos. So it's been pushing my AZ EQ6. Um, so for probably the last six months or so, I've at least had my eye on the second-hand used market in case anything you know, good came up like a heavier payload mount. I've been looking at the, you know, EQ8. Um, I've been looking at the the new Skywatcher uh, mount, but that's obviously only available brand new. I think it's the CQ something or other, um, which is kind of Skywatcher's answer to Ioptron's SEM70 and SEM60. And then I've also had my eyes on, um, yeah, like the SEM60 and the, the SEM70. They're pretty hard to come, come across. Um, but for me, like, you know, if I couldn't get like, if I wasn't able to necessarily get my hands on one of the really heavy payload mounts, like an EQ8 or something like that, I was willing to consider these Ioptron mounts, even though I've not had any experience with Ioptron mounts myself. So it's, you know, I'm a little bit hesitant, you know, getting into swapping like over to a different uh, manufacturer of mounts. But, you know, I know a few people who've got Ioptron mounts. Um, and I think as well, when you're looking at mass produced mounts, it really doesn't matter whether you're looking at Skywatcher or Ioptron. There's always, to a certain extent, a lottery as to, you know, you could just get a bad mount. Um, and it's, you know, it's not, it's not really necessarily to do with whether it's Skywatcher or Ioptron. I think often it's just to do with the fact that these things are mass produced and you can get unlucky. But anyway, point is, after all that waffling, the point is I did come across a SEM60 EC, so the encoder version, um, for a really good price, used market, a um, few years old, but, um, you know, spoke to the guy, got it off a guy called Ross out on the east side of um, Melbourne. And, um, yeah, so I just, I pulled the trigger on it. And um, so what I'm actually going to be doing now is I'll probably sell my HEQ5 Pro mount, keep the AZ EQ6. And um, so what I'm going to do today, look, I don't know anything about this mount. I've done a little bit of research on it, but I really don't know very much. I know there's a few quirks to it. Um, so, you know, I'm going to unbox it. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean and then I'm going to see if I can work out how to put the whole thing together and just understand how the axes work. So here we go. Here's the mount head itself. And it came with the trip here as well, which I'm really pleased about. So it's got a really... Um, Really solid looking, really solid looking um, pier to have the mount on, which will be good. And the thing is with this SEM60, um, its payload capacity is about, I think it's about 28 kilos. So both my Celestron and my Esprit 120 fall perfectly onto that half, half the payload mark. So you know, just what I'm looking for, for those heavy amounts, for those heavier, those heavier scopes. So look, I'm not going to put you through all of this while I try and work out how the hell this all goes together, but I'll come back a bit later when I've um, got things together and I've started to work things out. And um, I don't know, I'll just give you my first, first quick impressions of how things are going with um, the move, um, getting my head around a new, a new um, style of mount, the Ioptron and see how we go. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll come back a little bit later after I get this all together. All right, guys. So believe it or not, I've got a clear night. Um, since I got the Ioptron um, 60 EC, I have not managed. Um, it's been weeks and I, even, I have not even managed to um, polar align. <laughs> I've not even managed to polar align my mount yet. So tonight, my, my idea is I've got a little bit of data on Karina that I want to really want to finish off. So I'm going to get this guy on, get the Esprit 120 on there, get the thing polar aligned. Um, I've got it all cabled up, so it should be pr hopefully, fingers crossed, you know, and it's always a big fingers crossed when it's the first time you've played with a mount. 
So hopefully everything will go reasonably okay once I'm polar aligned and I won't have too many hiccups and um, the guiding will be okay, etc., etc. Um, I've also got a little bit of data I'd like to finish off. I'd like to get some RGB stars on the Gabriel, what's it called again? The Gabriel Mistral Nebula, which is very close to Carina. I took that with the 533 one shot color camera. So I think what I'm gonna do is put that on my other mount. So now I've got the Ioptron 60 as kind of my bigger mount, which should handle, you know, these two scopes like, you know, a lot more comfortably, I'm hoping. But then I've still got my AZ EQ um, 6 GT, which, you know, can still handle these if I need to have two running at once. But, you know, ideally I'll probably be running my smaller scopes um, on that mount. And I'm gonna, you know, that's all I can handle, I reckon. So I'll be getting rid of the HEQ5 Pro even though that is a great little mount. Um, but I think two mounts running at once is like all my brain can handle anyway. So um, yeah, let's get these outside um, and let's get polar aligned and um, have a first look at our, at the new mount and hopefully it all goes, all goes well. So yeah, let's get outside. Ooh. All right, here we go guys. Let's get this thing on. Without dropping it. Now I've got to remember where the hell did this go to balance it. It's been that long since I've put this on. I've got a rough memory. I've got a rough memory that it's about there. But we will see. Alright, step one. Step one's done. All right, guys. So I've managed to get um, I've managed to get this um, nicely balanced now. My first thoughts with this new mount are generally pretty good. Um, the two axes, when you're balancing it, they're a lot more they're a lot freer than what I'm used to with the um, the AZ EQ6. Um, so it's a lot it's a lot more sensitive when I'm balancing it, which is a good thing. Um, just shows how free the axes um, are on this mount. And um, takes a bit of a while to get used to the clutches. Again, on the AZ, it's just, you know, it's quite easy to disengage the two clutches if you're doing balancing. These have got these little screws on them. So, you know, that's just gonna take me a little bit to get used to. Um, but generally, you know, like any new piece of gear, no big surprises. Um, yeah, so I'm thinking I've got a polar align both mounts now because this one's been moved. Um, obviously this one's new, but this one's been moved as well. So I'm gonna need to, um, I'll probably start up um, that polar align piece of software. <laughs> what am I looking for? Sharp cap, yeah, I'll start up sharp cap. I'll run the polar align routine. Um, and get these both polar aligned and then we'll see how you know the usual things go slewing and guiding and all those that kind of jazz so let's move on to our next stage all right guys so I've polar aligned both mounts um, first time I've obviously done this ioptron I will say it's quite fiddly so it's definitely so not something I'd be wanting to do every night and I won't be moving this very much so that's fine and um, you do have to use a little tool um, yeah you have to sort of slacken off these four four nuts on either side so you can then make the adjustments so it is a bit I did find it quite time consuming and fiddly but like I said it's really designed to be in an observatory this mount or in a fixed position so I'm not worried about it AZ EQ 6 as per usual, you know, I find that that's just a really great mount in terms of something that's portable and it's quick and easy to set up and polar align. You don't need any tools. Um, everything's pretty solid on it. So it's definitely, um, just as an aside, it's definitely one of my favorite mounts in terms of ease of setup. Um, but anyway, <laughs> that's both done. I'm glad that's over. I'm glad I've managed to polar align both mounts um, sky is still looking good so let's um, 
let's head inside now and actually, fingers crossed, get something working. <laughs> it better work now, I tell you, or I'm not going to be a happy man. All right. All right, everyone. So, what's been happening? Look, um, that first night didn't go well because it clouded over. I started, you know, I managed to, I think I managed to just, yeah, I got polar aligned, but as soon as I was starting to try and get my guiding sorted out, it clouded over, which is, of course, is typical in this hobby. The weather here has been atrocious, absolutely atrocious. Um, um, then a few days later, it could have even been a week later, I can't even remember, but quite a few days later, I managed to get another gap and had a lot of trouble with the RA axes. Um, they've got these little, I think I showed it on the video, but they've got these like little wheels engage and disengage the clutches on the two axes on the 760, and they're really fiddly to get in the right position. So I found that I was either, I was either binding the mount or I had it too loose, so I had a bit of slop in the axes. And I also found that sometimes, even though it could be slewing perfectly fine to begin with, it would then bind part way through. So anyway, I got a bit of advice from the owner and I got a bit of advice from Logan at Logan's Astrophotography because he's got the SEM60 as well. He explained to me it is a bit fiddly and you know, so tonight what I've done is I've, I've played around with the axes, um, played around with the clutch, sorry, um, on the RA axes. Um, and I've just basically tried to get it into the sweetest spot that I can. Um, it did bind a little bit, so I've backed it off a little bit more. Um, I also did my calibration way over on um, sort of the small Magellanic cloud. I don't know why, but that seemed to help. Um, actually took longer than when I was doing it. Um, actually took a lot longer to do that calibration than it was before, so I'm not quite sure why, but Anyway, the magic of Astro is that things seem to have sorted themselves out now and I have it guiding, as you can see, this is the best guiding I've had by a mile. Um, I mean, this is down to, <clears throat> this is down to 0.3 at the moment and before, man, I was lucky to, I couldn't actually get it anywhere near under one arc second because the RA was just doing this. So basically, yeah, the, the um, blue line was just all over the shop. The deck, the deck's been pretty consistently good, um, but as you can see now, it's looking pretty good. Um, I had it at like 0.7 earlier, 0.6 sort of consistently. I think because the sky's cleared up quite a lot, um, yeah, it's looking really good now. I ran the, I ran the calibration assistant on this as well, and I've just changed. I just changed the min movement values on the RA and the deck axes as per the recommendations. Um, but I've left everything else, like the aggressiveness, the same. And as you can see now, like 0.37 at the moment. Um, yeah, man, geez, I'll take that any day. Because, um, yeah, I was starting to get worried that I couldn't even, yeah, I, I couldn't even get it anywhere approaching under one, so. Look, thankfully we're looking good now. And as you can see from Karina, um, this is just a test shot I took. I don't have cooling on or anything and I'm actually a little bit out of focus, but my stars are looking pretty decent. So I am, I'm pretty happy with that. I can live with that. And it's gonna be nice to have this mount for these bigger scopes because I did used to, you know, on the AZ EQ6, like I've explained, I did lose a lot of subs on my bigger scopes because, um, yeah, it's just pushing the capacity of that mount, even though I really like that's a great little mount. So anyway, I think, look, I think that's all to say. Um, I hope you got something out of the video. Um, I think, like I said, in hindsight, I think maybe the SEM70 might be a better option just because of the clutches. Actually, I don't even think they, I don't think they do the SEM60 anymore. I think it's been dis, you know, discontinued now. So I think the SEM70, which I think has the same clutches as the SEM120, I think they, um, I can see that they would be a lot better. So you don't have to go through this sort of, um, this fiddling around. But anyway, we're looking good now. And um, all I'll say is that I hope you guys are getting a lot more clear skies than I am. And um, 
I will catch you on the next video. So good luck with whatever you're imaging um, and I will see you soon. Cheers guys.